Irish, yes. <laughs> that is number nine. That is number nine. So, if we, if we go back to your, how you began playing music, Seamus, mm. and uh, you know your earliest memory memory of of of, of listening to music, even. My in the earliest memory of listening to music was from my mother. Yeah, she she was a playing the fiddle, fiddle player. Yes. Yeah. And in the that it was during it was just after the war. And uh, there was a scarcity of lamp oil. Uh, and because Ireland was neutral, you see. Yeah. South. So anyway, uh, she 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 used to play this this fiddle like you know, and uh, she they'd down the fiddle and she'd look into the to the to the to the fire flames, you know. And my father was there and he was bored out of his tiny mind because he'd love to read a fucking newspaper or read a book or something like that, you know. And he'd be there and. The, so anyway, just when the right psychological moment, I'd say, Do you know, ma'am, are you not a small bit out of tune there? And all hell would, like, I mean, the, the cat would know how to dive for cover, the dog. All except me. She would raise her head, you know, and let her call, she'd look at him. Well, God may forever blast you, she'd say. I tune me fiddle before I met you, she says, and I tune me fiddle when you're dead. And a big smile on his face. And I well, know, Mum, he says, but I see, I see, see, get a bit of a out tune. I go to hell, she says. Yeah. So that was the start of it. Um, then what put me on to the tin, was the tin whistle was him. Your dad played the, the whistle. Tin whistle. whistle. Uh. I mean, if, uh, my mother was all uh, mad for the fiddle because oh, she didn't want the flute at all. Yeah. Oh no, she says you're not going to play an old flute. She says, and, and she says it moves the brain. She says, and, <laughs> and <laughs> truth in that. And, uh, uh, how, uh, uh, truth in that. Uh, and old people, she says, you know that it used the brain, but the blown. Yeah. And she says all that. So anyway, well, she says my father, which and put down that bloody tin whistle. Just, just a bad example for him. So he used to take me up on his knee and he'd, and, and, and he'd finger and I'd blow. Aye. And I thought I was playing the wearing of the green, you know. So after a while he says, now listen, he says, you'll have to finger it yourself. So they, I started that way and I used to go round the, 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 the neighbourhood. And especially the women in the mor mornings when they'd be baking a cake, you know, or something like that, in fierce bad humour, depending on what went on between the sheets the night before or what did not. And I'm telling you, I was the first to know. You know, hello, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm Dory. You know, heard me playing the thing with the Bang! <laughs> <laughs> the clipper on the ears. Oh, Jesus Christ! It was one, was one little, one woman. She was Nora, and she used to. Uh, Red face. Hello, Nora, says I. Where'd you have me playing the tin whistle, man? So, ah, you go home, you little bastard, she says. I have me thrown down round the bin. So, anyway, that was the start. But there was one morning, and did you ever hear of the Ren Boys? Aye. Well, down the west where I come from. They were popular. Eh? They were popular in your part of the world. Oh, they were, mm. oh, they were, oh, they were. And it was flute and tin whistle Aye. and bowron. And you see about 20 or 30 of them in a gang. And you go round to the houses. They had Some of them had sticks to, do, to to keep the dogs away. Others of them were for collecting the money. Right. And there was men for dancing and there was men for playing and, and, the music, and yeah. bowron. But anyway, a, a grand boy gang came to our house once this evening this morning. And in the come. Oh, they were big men, big fellas, you know, and in the late forties, I suppose. So anyway, they were talking, and the next thing, these two fellas put two flutes to the, to the, to the, oh Jesus Christ, the sound of that flute, uh, and the bow on. Do you remember who they who they were? I didn't you know, know from they were Adam. They were masked they were. up, I suppose. Huh? And I says they were masked. You see, yeah. they had things down over their their, their noses. And I said, uh, anyway, I was so taken by them, is that, they, and they were dancing as well, and they pulled my father out, dancing with them, but they left. 
I never forgot it. I never forgot them. Aye. And my father didn't know them either. Yeah. No one knew them. So he says, I went after them in the snow. Run after them with two yeah. feet. And the boys all, they were, they was, we could see them jumping ditches and on, on bicycles and, and the sound of them bow runs through the, and it was snow, it was covered in snow, the place yeah. was snow. It had a lovely sound. Mm -hmm. So my father, my mother ran after me and she says, come back here, she says, and I was kicking. You're not going with the Rand boys, she says. Your time hasn't come. Yeah. So that was the start and I went over the village with my father then on that night and that, that night uh, on the, the the pubs were full of red boys in Gertie. And the sound of that bow runs and the flutes and the tin whistles. Oh Jesus, I it thought stuck it stuck with you. Eh? It stuck with you. Oh yeah, well you see I came from that area. Yeah. There were all a place where the flute was 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 the instrument. Yeah, North Connaught kind of Ah yeah, the, yeah. Now there was another part of North Connacht where there was the Goodlands, it was the fiddle. Aye. But the flute was there because there were people who went back and forth to England. There were spalpings. Right. And they brought the flutes with them, you see. And they bought them in England. That's how the how the flute became that part of the world. Did did you have a did you have a teacher as such, like somebody that you would have went to to get no, tunes from no, or is no, it no. see I I just was listening. So, but anyway, I was coming to that. Uh, they, they, they went off, and uh, I'd seen different gangs, different gangs. But Jesus, the boys, and I was, uh, I'd seen early in the morning. No sign. Uh. And years and years later, I used to hear about um, uh, great uh, brothers, two flute players called the Dyer Brothers. And I used to pass by their ruined house every day as a, as a postman. And I say, who is and I don't know who these Dyer brothers was, you see. So, uh, oh, they were, they were, and they were, they, even that they had left for England, their names were still there Aye. among the people. So anyway, uh, I found myself in Manchester among the exiles. And uh, there was a good scene of music there at that time. Was there? there. Ah. Was there. So I says, uh, I was listening. I went when I was, I I don't miss the stint anyway. The place was packed. It was St Patrick's Night. It was packed, and they were all locals, you know. And I hadn't seen some of them for general years and years. Another day, known at all. Yeah. You could see your next door neighbour over there, and you'd meet him in England. Yeah. And you wouldn't have known them at home because immigration was so bad. But anyway, uh, I was cacking up, and this fella came over. And he says, "This, this two, this, this." I was telling her about the first time that I uh, got that, you know, this, this, uh, uh, how I got onto the flute first, you know, and the two men that came in on a floor ran by us. I says, "I suppose God knows where they are." Maybe they're over here in the bright lights of London or England. Maybe they're dead. I don't know where they are, but they started me on the flute. And I says, in honour of them, I'll play the tunes that I heard that morning. Aye. The only thing is have no bow on, unfortunately. Now, this was an abbey, swear well. You, did you play the abbey, don't you? No, but you, you have a good, ah. a good, good rattle out of there. Go on ahead. Huh? Go on ahead. Go on, no, if, I no if, I, if I know, if I, I'll try Well, it's two flutes. Uh, yeah, go on ahead. <laughs> so
Yeah. Well, that was basically what I heard, and I played it that night. And um, he says, "I want you to come over here." He says, "I want to see want you to meet two men." So uh, I went over and these two men. Do you know these fellows? He says. I says, "No, I wouldn't." Well, he says, "They're your next door neighbours. They'll go across the hill from you." No way. He says, "I never heard you, never seen you before." I says. So anyway, he says, uh, we were listening to about the story you told about the two Ren boys that came in to your house, Mona, and your, your search for them, and he says, your search is over. You're not from Manchester. <laughs> Me and the brother, he says, just before we went to England. Uh. Just before we went to England. So that was the story that, you know, yeah. that's, that's how I started. I was late. I was a late starter I, by the day standards. I was late. I was ah. late. I was 17 years before I put a flute in my mouth. You, you were 17 years old before Aye. you lifted the flute? And I got this flute and it was it was an old Walton flute and it was stuck together with blue. <laughs> and uh, I was sniffing blue for two years and I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, Jesus, I felt great. <laughs> my mother wanted me to play the fiddle, you see. I said, Mother, I'm no good at the fiddle. And I said, I'm telling you. I remember listening to Coleman one day on the re- records, you know. And I says, No, Mother says, I, do you, do you hear that? There's no way I'd ever be able to do on the fiddle. So I says, I'm afraid the flute is going to be my instrument. For better or for worse. Well, here I was with this flicking flute. And it, uh, and it put together by a glue. And uh, just when I needed them most, all these flute players, all, all of them, they were all swept away by the immigrant ship. Uh, old England. And there were, there were plenty there were plenty of flute players around oh, your home place that time. Gone, they were all so gone, eh? All and, and the, where did you the, 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 you see after the war, England was building up after the war. Aye. Uh, so And I was left a musical orphan. Yeah. You could say. So where, where did you pack up your repertoire and Well and, now and just by miracle Kieran McMahon came on with his Jabba Journey work. And uh, there used to be different ones playing, on, it used to be there on a Sunday and at night time, uh, once a week. Which is this flute flute player came across the, the radio and he had a bow on with it. Paddy Joe Maloney. Yes. Uh. From Tipperary. Yeah. And I thought, just Christ, I never, I thought, I thought I never did anything like him. Aye. It was after winning the All Ireland. So that was my saviour. And any time at all that I could, I'd tune in. I wanted to hear Paddy Joe Maloney. So he was my guide. Right. Uh, and another guide was Paldro Lachlan. Very good. Yeah. He was he was great too, and he was another All Ireland champion. And there were. Clear, you know, yeah. temporary. You won it yourself in 1965? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. And how, like, coming up, you know, from the first time you lifted the flute at 17 and then went in the senior all Ireland, many, you know, that was only a few years later. Uh, it was only what? So you, you must have 65. really. 65. You must have put in a lot of, a lot oh, of I work did. in the meantime. I did, yeah. Yeah. I did. Oh God, I did. Uh, and well, and I'll tell you what the normal thing is. My mother, when she seen I was I was destined to play the flute, she says there was a fella visiting us one night, one day, and he used to play the flute. His name was Paddy Reed. He was a relation of our own. She says Paddy, and she says you wouldn't get a flute for that fella. She says this one, she says he'll kill him. Mm. I want to get a right 
Loop for him. When she, he says, you might, be in, you might be in luck, he says. He says, I, I play, he says, in the Phoenix Park with the Bernard and Kelly band. And uh, he says, there's a man there, he says, the, 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 the leader of it. And he's from Cavan. And he says, his brother has a lot of flutes. Aye. So you might, I might be able to get a flute for you. But just out of the blue, this flute arrived. Was and it th- this one? This, yeah. yeah. The rattle, uh, yeah. One, yeah. 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 It's a great, great, great flute. Um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it went through the wars too, Seamus, though. You, you kind of, you're like myself, you're a kid, though, so a left-handed flute player, so the mounts were in the way. <laughs> You see, that flute, um, I, 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 when I went to Belfast, I got the most taken off. Aye. For hair trigger figure. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of hearts broken over that, I think. There was. The, 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 the flute playing huh? aficionados who huh? are mad about the instruments, kind of. What? The, you know, there was a lot of people talking about that, you know, yeah. over the years. What has what Seamus done to that lovely flute, you know? Well, as long but as it's, it sounded. It's, 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 you know, it sounded great. So that's all that matters, but um, I suppose I was wrong in a way. I suppose I shouldn't have done it. But, but the, 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 you know, because it was a right handed flute, the mounts were, mm. you know, you was, you, you, uh, I'd be trying to reach over yeah, them. And yeah. So, anyway, it's it's one of it's a it's one of the really it's a really special, yeah, ruddle that I couldn't uh, knock a tone out of it at all. First, uh, oh, no, no. I had it sort of given up on it, yeah. And just the next thing, suddenly the floor tone came in it. Yeah. And I started playing it. And God, couldn't believe it. So then, you see, that was one of the things that put me in a position where I could go for an All Ireland. Yeah. So I went. Um, I went. The first All Ireland went to was 1962. And that time, the flares, you had to play in the, in the morning in the flares, the, the heats in the morning. It wasn't, there was no such thing as kind of flare. And, oh, okay. and you played in the whole island that evening. So that's how it went. Aye. So I remember playing in the whole island in the morning. And I got out of Canuck to Peggy McGrath was in it and when I called McNamara, I remember. Yeah. Give us a big tournament. Yeah. You're in good company. And uh, I got out that the next thing we got, I was looking to see the overseas. There was a fellow there, he was, he was, um, Billy Clifford. Yeah. And Paddy Taylor. Oh my Christ, they were playing. Good players, players, yeah. Oh my God almighty. Yeah. I thank my God I wasn't in their section. Yeah. But if they come in next to them at all Ireland, I said to myself, there isn't a hope. There's not a hope. And Cahill McConnell, he was playing with stuff that time. Yeah. But just McConnell won it. Aye. He came out of Ulster and overseas. And there was another book. John Brady. Oh, Linster yeah. champion. Yeah. From Offaly. Yeah. And he, I don't know, he, had a few, he was a great blue player too. So I was up against it. Yeah. It's all, all, all the greats there. You know, you weren't. You were so in anyway, I, 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 uh, I played. That time you had to play set dance. You had to play a slow air. You had to play a march. You had to play a real jig and horn by. Mm-hmm. All. And that's how you're met, you know. Yeah. So how did you like? You, you know, you're 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 a big um, fan of, of Michael Coleman. You know that's oh, well sure. yeah. known. And so, did you develop your your own part, your own style from the people that you were listening to, or, or uh, and 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 those records of Coleman? Yeah, that was at the start. You know, uh, from Maloney and from uh, Old Auckland and that. Yeah. And it was a sort of a straight 
put in including one 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 eight. It was just after winning the All Ireland in sixty five. And I was playing with the Coleman Country Kelly Band. And you know, if we were down in the mid in the end of Maitland we'd be in time. Mm. Or over in Mio we'd be in time. Or up in Roscommon we'd be in time. But just because it was only about three or four miles up the road from us in Monastreden, just as we were late. We were late. So when we came pulled into the into on, on, on the on the street and got out, they were all in and they were dancing. And when I looked, it was this, like it was like a fife that was coming out of this, or was it a, yeah, like a three quarter flute. Aye. Jesus Christ. And I bowed on. And I went over, I said to myself, is this a record? And this man was sitting on the stage. And his son playing the bow on. Yeah. And he was playing the same whistle on the side of his mouth. Christ, he stuck me to the floor. Yeah. He was only up the road from me. It's just that it was Jim Donaghy. Uh-huh. Yeah. I went up, and I put my shoulder to the to the to the stage, and he winked at me. And uh, he, when he finished, I says, "How are you doing, young Tonsy?" He says, "I hear you won the All Ireland." I didn't just said, "I did," but I said, "I want to ask you a question." Why you, the way you play there, I said, you must have played a flute at one time. Oh, sure, he says, trust me. It was the instrument I had, he says, before I lost my teeth. He says, sure, he And I says, were you as good a tin, uh, were you as good a flute player then as you're a tin whistle player now? Far better, he says. So that's his only an old toy. Yeah. Christ, he says. You'd be a queer man to win, to, 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 to Meat and all in and thought, he says, if I had mm. my teeth and fruit, yeah, I'd warm your arse with your boy. Uh, and did you, would you pick much up off him? Call, call up one night, he says. He says, and I'd give you a few tips before I die. Uh, and we just said, the one night came into more than two, three. Oh, Jesus. Was, and there was times I used to sit there and listen to him. Yeah. It wasn't that I, was, I absorbed it. You know, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's how I got the dimension. Yeah, that's uh, you know you, you can you know and listening to recordings and, and of how him, he uh, yeah. and how he he got it was from Jim Coleman. Yeah, Mike Coleman's Michael brother. Coleman's brother. Yeah. But Jim Jim Coleman got it from a, a Piper Gorman. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you too because a, a lot of what, a lot of what you do is very related to. Mm. Well, you see, they, the all pipes, came, you know? they all came from the pipes. Yeah. We all have to give it down to the pipes at one stage or other. Aye. I mean, if only for the pipers, we wouldn't have any music at all. Yeah. But the piper seen that he was dying out in different places, and he said he'd have to pass it on to the ordinary people. Mm-hmm. And that's the fiddlers got it, and the flute players got it. And... Uh, they had to do the best they could yeah. to recapture what they heard from the pipes by start tying an error. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, it was the pipes. Yeah. And there, there's certain things that you do in, in, in your playing that, um, that you know, are instantly recognisable as, as you, well, uh, no, you know, I, as, as I, your own. I, I um, don't know what I'd be able to do this now or not. I used to be able to do it. Um, where, you, where, you know, it's, you spoke earlier about jumping the octaves and things yeah. like that, and also starting on, on, on the high part of the tune. And
copper plate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, you, you've heard the pl- copper plate yourself, the, the way the plate, the, it's ordinary straight way, the plate. Yeah. But that came from the pipes. Aye. And that came down to Jim Coleman. Not Michael, to Jim. Because Jim was such a simple lad, you know, and he used to go round to the houses and he used to make his money in the country house dances. Yeah. And he, he so Jim Donahue would have picked yes. a lot up. He, uh, he, yeah. Jim Donahue took it from him. There was a whole lot of young tin whistle players. Aye. They were called Jim Cop- Coleman's disciples. Yeah. And they got that from Jim, the sentence. Yeah. yeah. And when you were when you started out playing kind of professionally, you you were in the Ke- the Coleman Country Cayley band, and yes, you would have been very busy at that time. Oh, we were. The country. Two nights, three nights a week. Aye. And did that have much of an effect on the way you played? The only thing about that is that it gave me plenty of fucking practice. Aye. But as far as helping you in your music itself, no. Yeah. Because you're playing for dancers, you know, and you no, know, you have to. Like, yes. I tell you where, which was a help, although it just happened and shouldn't have happened, but it did happen. Uh, we had a courtless branch in Gorchin, Coleman branch. And uh, I had a fallen out with the county board over a simple thing called a cup of tea. So uh, I took no heed of it. She called me a chancer because I was spinning out a cup of tea. But anyway, um, we had a falling out with the county board and the kind of council. And I wouldn't mind, but I nearly lost my job over it. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, they hadn't much thanks for me, like. So, next thing I heard was that Pete Minwright, Jim's chance, wasn't wanted in Colts. So I bowed to their wishes and I left and I brought the Coleman, all the musicians with me, with one of the Coleman Traditional Society. Right. And it was there, listening to records and stuff like that, that helped me, along with Donahue. Donahue was in it. Aye. That's, that's what... And- to develop your plan, like you're you're known as a as a virtuoso mm. um, soloist as well, you know. So that the the flamboyance that you put into your plan, you know, did, was that picked out of something, you know, some of some of those old records. That that oh, that ability oh. that you have, yeah. that technical skill, um, Which was, yeah. you know, you 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 must have really worked. You must have put hours into. I did yeah. working out how to did. do the. So she'd be head ringing and, and, at and, times when I'd been working, it'd be in my head. Yeah. When I'd be working like as a postman, it was in my head. Aye. And then with Donahoe, I should go up to Donahoe's, you know, and I'd sit there and listen to Donahoe. Yeah. And he'd say, now try that, he'd say. And all, all of that, you know, the back stitching and the crowns and, and, and the rules. And you the, you the as a piper would understand that. Yeah. Barry, or Barry, you as a piper would understand that. Yeah. Back stitches and all that sort of thing. High, like top fingers and blow fingers, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, and if you don't play that way, and if you don't aspire to that, you're not playing Irish traditional music as it should be. Aye. You know? Like, it's, it's, it's a particular, you know, people, you know, it's definitely Slago. As well, you know that that mm. definitely is in there. You know that long phrase, yeah. and that, the kind of liveliness of it. And all. Well, you see, but, but do, Johnny, you, you I, al- do you also bring something else to the table? I think. I wonder. That is, is um. I don't know. That's probably your personality too, you're coming out and your playing. But yeah, that's it. Uh, well, you see, Piper Gorman used to go to the Coleman Country. Used to be there, not every Sunday night, but some Sundays, and they used to gather at Coleman's Cross. And he passed on his music to them. There was a whole about 10 or 12 fiddlers. But uh, Michael, the brother, and Jim, they were the young lads. And he used to sleep in uh, a, 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 an iron, there was a forge, a lock-up. 
And he uh, used to sleep there when he'd be in the area mm. on a shakedown. And the two boys, the Goldman, used to come up the road in the evening. And he would teach, teach them, he would shoot at them. Right. As, a, as opposed from the other. Yeah. yeah. So you, you're, you're, you're very aware of... So that, and that, yeah. that, 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 I should finish, that Iron House, the Coleman, the Coleman Memorial is built on their foundations. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. it? Just. Yeah. But you, you're very, you're very aware in your own, you know, the, when I hear you speaking about those musicians of older generations, you're, you're very aware of the lineage that, that, oh, wow. that you have, that you're ultimately part yeah. of as well. Yeah. I think I hope so anyway. Yeah. At least I hope so anyway. Um, and does that inspire you to play? Well, it used to, but I'm. You see now what's the way I'm. 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 I'm, I'm in trouble with the flute, with the with, with my teeth and that. Yeah. And it's cut me off a bit, you know. Right. Put me off. But you, you must you must get great satisfaction out of knowing. Oh, why? The the legacy that you've that left is, as that, well. That is that that is a great satisfaction. Yeah. It is. It is a great satisfaction. There's, a lot, of, you know, your stuff there's a lot of generations yeah. of flute players. Uh, as, as that old fellow says, uh, uh, that brilliant says one time, when you, I can die now. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and how do you, like, think lots of things have, have changed since you were learning learning music. Oh, and, it is, yeah. You know, the way people learn music well, is different. Well, you see, than, I'll tell you now, it has. And, but, it has gone a wrong way you in think? a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. with this jazz, the jazzing it up like, and yeah. is, well, fuck, it's, it's, that's, they're ignoring what we are talking about here. Aye. As Jim Gunner, who says, you know, he just could snap his, snap his fingers like that, you know. He says, you have to bring it all with you, he says. Not, he says, like a, like a horse, he says, going through a hedge, he says. Dragging it all, he says, you want to bring it all with you, he says. Right. That's what you do. And he's talking about bringing ah. the legacy that he's been ah. given with him. And variations and tribbles yeah. and that sort of thing. But, you know, when you have been playing at an awful fast rate, they're living out half it. Yeah. Aren't they? And do, do you think, like, at, in the current, you know, position we're in, yeah. you know, where people are learning off CDs and, and off... Yeah, the internet and, and all of that, you know. Mm, well. But there, there's still, you know, there's still a real love and a real interest. Oh, there in, is. In bringing that old material. Oh, that's the only thing about through. that is that very old material, you know, you want to be careful because Irish music should be developing. And you know what I mean? The tone that you are on that flute now, like, a beautiful tone and things like that. But if you go back to the the piss you know, the puff Afton blow yeah. you know, you have you know, half of this is gone with, with wind, you know. Mm. Yeah. But we soon have it two together. That's very really nice. Do you play the dummy sp don't oh shall we have a legend in that? What do we do? Play that one that we used to play together, um uh, Paul Mod Modreski, the, the oh the yes, soul, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs>
Yotter Hall. Mm. <laughs> it was to be uh, the man that uh, that composed it. It's supposed to be a Leitrim reel, I think. Was uh, it? Yeah. I th- I think it came from Leitrim, you know. Yeah. And the man was listening to that. He was he used to live beside the lake, and he used to hear the otters growl that night. Yeah. So going back now, yeah. and they said that that's how they, uh, that reel came. That's that's another I think that's in B minor now and, and yeah. you can notice a darkness about it. Yeah, I, I remember you um, having a conversation with me one time about where you believe that the the origins of the music came from, where where it was very involved with nature. Yeah, um, it came from nature. If I'm right, uh, that you were you had ideas that the 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 ornaments or the, or, mm. or whatever came from. The animals. From animals. And from yeah. birds. Ah. And uh, that was passed on to the piper. Yeah. And the piper passed it on down. Ah. As it developed. Because we, 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 like, I mean, our forefathers had no tape recorders. Mm-hmm. They had no nothing. So what was it to inspire them? Yeah. The only thing they had to inspire them was the birds. Yeah. Or just call it the animals. Yeah. So even like if you have a bow on there, and the rhythms, is the galloping hooves of wild horses. You know? Yeah. That's where it came from, originally. Yeah. And then it went from there to the piper. Because I remember playing one night. I remember playing Colonel Fraser. My wife especially likes <laughs> likes me come playing Colonel Fraser. I don't know why. And she says that there's birds singing in that. Well, I don't think that it's birds. I think that it's uh, it's, it's animals. But I won't, I won't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't contradict her, you know. Yeah. But her sister, oh, she says that's the birds. Do you do, Colonel Fraser? I'll have a go at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, I think myself. That used, I, I would always say that that is uh, the. Right to the bumblebee of Irish music. Right, <laughs> that's you know, a that's a, yeah that's a big that's a big statement. <laughs> well, you know, yeah.
another thing I want to ask you about the, the high, the high part. You, sometimes you start the tune on the second part. Aye. And where does that come from? That's around us. As I said to when I came down from Dunahoe. Yeah. And from the from the pipes. When you start on the high part, you hit it mid air. Uh, when you are starting on the low, you have to build it up, you know. Uh, and whereas, like we say. Sleep like listening to that uh, fucking thing, you know. The one, the one that I always remember you, you, you doing it from was, was that real Anderson's reel. Oh, why? Uh, was it so real? I think so. I, you know, that that's a well known well, tune. Like, Sam. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. I haven't uh, done the high part. Mm. I never know when to stop then. Yeah. <laughs> when you start on the second. Bit. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I, that's what I mean. But still yeah. and all, it's, it's a good way of hitting it. Uh, it's fairly lively. Hey, yeah. Huh? Yeah. You're hitting it mid air, like, like yeah. we say, we say, right, instead of. No. Yeah. Instead of that, you're too. See what I'm talking about. That's a great the, 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 the Peter Horton used to like doing those barks. Uh, you know, he used to. And I said, Peter, where did you get them? Maybe Jesus is the one. Maybe he had them talk. So he wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> so you got them from the fucking pipes, Peter. That's where you got them. Yeah. It's a lot of the, the thing with the call on the pipes popping, where they're. Popping and, you know. They're lifting the thing. And do it, uh, what do you call it? Um, Cranning. Yeah. And there's many types of different trends, you know. Mm -hmm. That that comes from the sheep bad, you know. You know. Yeah. What about the, the um the, like the, the sometimes I listen to your playing on that it reminds me of you know the it's uh, the flourishes and all that you do will be reminiscent of you know the likes of the travelling papers like like Johnny Dolan yeah. or you know some of those those runs yeah. down and stuff that you do seem to have come. Well, it comes from you know, them. The, a, a lot of it is very 
Yeah, you have to Reminds try your best that, to do you know? You know, as much as you can to emulate them as best you can. Oh, right. But they're the masters at the same time. Yeah. At, at the round, around the time when you were on the road and doing your thing, and, and there weren't that many flute players, no. you know. The one that was that uh, left, you know, a lot age, of them had my age, not at all. I and and there wasn't. You were kind of flying the flag for. Oh, yeah. For well, there was. Now, Malloy was a bit younger. And he came along, which was great. Myself and Cahill McConnell in the north, and a uh, fellow called John Brady. He was Linster champion for years here. Yeah. He was an unbeaten Linster champion, a lovely fellow. Uh, from from Maffoli. Yeah. He was the Linster champion. And uh, let us see. What else was Pat Carty? Yeah, and Mick, Mick O'Connor. And Mick O'Connor, yeah. yes. But uh, like, um, what was I going to say about that? That's the about, about all that there was, you know. Yeah. Flute was at a very low ebb. Yeah. And then it began to build up. You know, and people began to yeah. listen to records, I suppose. But a lot of that is, is is obviously thanks to people like you who who did record and who did. Well, I know, suppose, I suppose, it, uh, I, suppose lit, I, 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 I was delighted. I mean, it was a great pleasure for me, and to get to get because I knew that when it's done on, on record, as you mean, it's there forever, yeah. and you can die, and you can be an, an old man, and you can. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's not. It, it, you don't feel that you have your music is lost. Yeah. You know? Well, you you've you've recorded, you've you've a an extensive catalogue. You know, at this stage, you've oh, you've a I lot of. I must have uh, nineteen. Let me see. Nineteen sixty-seven or sixty-eight was the first one. And um, I made that record in a while of an evening. Yeah. And then I remember 1971 was with Josie Keegan. Yeah. And McGuire. <coughs> so then, after that, Finn Bardwyer, nothing you do, but let make a record. And I was in bad old shape now, because my mother had died. Mm. And I missed her terrible. I was an only son. And you know what it's like. Yeah. When you have a mother like that, it breaks your heart. And I had lost the bloody, bloody the will to play. Yeah. You know, I did. It, it was a different world you know, when she died. Yeah. And I went. I was a married man at the time, and she was, an, she was an old lady, but she was still. And but she would it because she gave you the music as she well. She did, yeah. yeah. And she used to look after me and send me to. She used to make out, you know, what I used to book into places like, you know, for, for the flares and that. She'd done all that. Yeah. She was very proud of me, I think, you know. I did break her heart in other ways. And to, to record at that time, it, it, it was a big deal. You know, oh, it, Jesus. You know, it wasn't as, as easy as it is now, nowadays. Oh. Where you, you, you can, you know. Sure, I mean, nowadays you go in and you play one, two tunes and then you go, <laughs> you go back. After about a week, and you, you know, <laughs> and try that again, and oh, you might be six months later. Yeah, but you at know? that time you just had to go do it all in the one sitting room. Well, you had yeah. because, and I'll tell you, but it had its advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, it has disadvantages of you, know, you didn't have the perfect, deadly, technical. But, but you but captured an energy. You did. Yeah, you captured something. Yeah, in it where. The other thing is, yes, dead as a, it's, it's perfect, but it's as dead as a fucking door, really. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? And I, I think that's why a lot of people go back to those recordings and and know that they're special because they do have, there's a, as there is an energy comes off them that you yeah. know what's in the moment yeah. and you know. You well, know. I mean, if you didn't do it that way at that time, it, you, you went in to die, die, you shite the lights, and you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, excuse me for being uh, for being a bit casual or rough. <laughs> yeah. And when did you <coughs> you went to England? What when 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 was that? 
Aye, that's what I... Uh, we went to England in 1987. Who who would you have who would you have um, played with at that time? In England, yeah. Would you bumped into Roger Sherlock and all and a, bit, a little bit, yes, and, and Tony Howley. Yeah. Manchester wasn't great. Don't London was the place for that. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, would, would Sherlock have been a, an influence on your playing? Would Rob, oh, he was. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would be wrong to say he wasn't. Yeah, he was. Yeah, oh, I recently heard that the, the the record that he did with Sean McGuire. On it, uh, uh, well, even before that, yeah, he was with the band, with the with the Hibernian, and Jesus, he, he he you could hear it, like, you know, it was like a lonely seagull, you know, with his, the tone, uh, cut, bang, you know, yeah. Um, but I remember him when he was a plowman. Back at back at home, uh, yeah, and I sort of looked at him. You know, I mean, there was there was a thing written about what is Miles Nogopoline. You've heard of Miles Nogopoline, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I seen it in reality. I seen Sherlock. You know, hot horseman, hot body, brute man. Are you praying there in the sunset? You know, I seen Sherlock, young fella, like with a black beret on him, the old coat, and, and what with these horses too, mm. and I'm. Blow on the red, the the black, the 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 background's black and the hillside's red. You know, the ground. Then he left it all and went to England. Uh, he wants to be remembered of that. He doesn't want to be reminded of that. Uh, but I think he's wrong. Yeah. I told him. I said, "You're fucking wrong today, Roger. That's your roots. You can't run away from it." I had a, I ran away from him for a good while. I says, "I got, I did," but I says, "I had to turn and face it." In the end, yeah. <coughs> and it was a good job I did. Because, remember I was telling you about the triple CD? Yeah, the, the phantom shadows of a... Aye, party. well now, I'll tell you, that happened through accident. And we're doing this tour of Ireland with Tony McMahon and Earlow Leonard and a fellow called McKiernan. And... Uh, Sean they, they McKiernan were, uh, Sean, and, and they weren't getting on. They were still fighting, you know. They were, they were fucking fighting, you know. And I was a peacemaker, believe it or not. <laughs> I was a peacemaker. How <laughs> does I calm down? <laughs> calm down. I said, I said, if you break this up, says I will never work again. So anyway, uh, to keep them in good order and keep them, um, uh, you know, keep them. They were going round in the car. And you tell you, you could you could have got a knife like the, the atmosphere. I started telling antidotes and stories about the old young lad, when I was a young lad, playing the tin whistle and the whole lot. That's how it came up, and McMahon was listening to it. Oh, he says, boy, he says, you'll have to do a one-man show about that. Uh. have to make a record. Oh, he says, I know, I've been running away from that all my life. Do you want me to turn around and face me go? <laughs> it's the only way you'll do it, he says, tell me. Uh. He was yeah, right because I I, I I I loved that that because I, I, actually when you were teaching me did you have did Danny have that triple CD yeah, yeah. oh you have yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I must get well, a copy of it because I don't wear mine so much. <laughs> I was sad when I had it done although I, I said Jesus Christ get going down that road you know it's very deep you know father mother and you know it's it's very deep you know yeah. You hear that? Yeah. Jigs, maybe.
Lovely, beautiful. Lovely, lovely stuff. Yeah. The old cool one, but I remember playing the Russian do. And definitely it's, it's, it's in the row, it's, it's in the plane of the road you do that it's that I get it that the first notes comes in. Uh, <coughs> I was down that night <coughs> cycling down the estate. This big notice was up. Twenty first anniversary. And the boys are down the hash blocks. Mm-hmm. And I got off my bike and I looked up at them. And I said, Oh Jesus Christ, I said they were so fucking young. They were so young today. You know, it's upset me really. Mm-hmm. Or what? I said, you know. But uh, I remember playing Roshin Do for Bobby Sands' mother. She says, Bobby, she says, used to play that whistle, she says, and he, he sent he sent a notice out to me, she says, out of the prison. I had the honour, I says, of meeting him, ma'am, you know. She says, what was he trying to tell me? He says, he was trying to tell you in a nice way that he was dying. He was going to die. That's what he was trying to tell you. Oh, she says, I didn't know. No one sort of knew. I like to say, no, tell you. Mm. It's the red, it's the black rose red and the blood of Irishmen. By God, it has really become very, very popular up in the north, hasn't it? That tune, yeah, Rosie oh, Day. Yeah. Jesus, I suppose with the northern troubles and everything else. Yeah. My yeah. dad used to play it, so he did. Huh? My dad would have played it. What does he play? He played a bit the mandolin. Did he? The oh, stuff. there was an awful lot of them played Rosie and mm-hmm. Round, if, if you played Rosie and in in, in, in in Belfast, there was a silence, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No more than hear the bittern cry in the wild sky where they're laying. Where the voices of the softer birds above the wailing of the rain. Now will they know when wild marsh blows through slanting snows her fanfare shrill, blowing to flame each golden cup of many an upturned daffodil? Ah, but when the dark cow leaves the moor to pasture poor and greedy weed, perhaps they'll hear a low at morn, <coughs> nifting her horn. In pleasant mead. For they shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. Do they go down to the sun and in the morning? We shall remember them. By Christ, we will remember them. Yeah.